And so that's really what swayed me toward the, the Vatrair. I mean, it sounds like Vatrair listened to customer feedback over the last few years and they improved their batteries based on that feedback, yet keeping the prices, you know, affordable. And I'll add to that, I've actually been testing this Vatrair battery, this exact setup that I'm about to show you for about the last four weeks or so, and everything has been working flawlessly. And by the way, guys, Vatra is changing the graphics on the outside of their battery. A 300 amp hour battery, it's quite a bit larger than the, the standard Group 24 battery, even a Group 27, you know, that most RV dealerships supply when you purchase an RV. And then of course, vicinity, so that you're not having to replace cables. And of course, you can see that's exactly what I've done here. You know, I wanted a solution that was economical, that would allow me to retain the factory location with a giant lithium battery. And essentially the key is this marine grade battery box. It's sized for a Group 8D battery, and it just so happens that the Vatrair 300 amp hour lithium battery, it's about the same size as an 8D battery. And step is to disconnect the power, you know, make sure that your shore power is disconnected so that there's no converter charger power running. And then also cut your 12 volt power, your uh, battery disconnect if equipped. Of course, double check with your RV manufacturer if you have any doubts about where and how to do that. But otherwise it's as simple as undoing the positive and negative leads from your old battery, then physically removing your battery and the old battery box. And then essentially I'm starting with a, a clean slate. Now the old battery box sat between the L bracket, whereas the new larger 8D battery box, it just sits on top of it. And so in order to give it a nice surface, a nice foundation to rest upon and mount to, rather than just sit on the top of that L bracket, I just took some nominal two by two stock that I had laying around, just some surplus, and it actually measures out to one and a half inches. And that happens to be the exact dimensions of the existing L bracket height. And so I just cut two pieces of that, and that really gives me a nice solid surface to attach the new battery box to. I just painted mine black with some leftover paint lying around, but uh, you're never gonna see the two by two stock, so that's really just optional. Then I just took the 8D battery box. I mounted it right on top of the L brackets with those two by two spacers. And on mine, I did have to trim the front two corners of the NOCO battery box. They had some little notches on the outside, I guess for maybe some surface mount screws. And basically with the shape of my A-frame, how it gets narrow, combined with the, the front wall profile on the travel trailer, the box was just a little too wide in the front there. And so I just took a little oscillating tool, trimmed off the front corners, and that made it fit perfectly between the A-frame. And really this is going to vary based on your RV manufacturer and the profile of your front wall. But let me show you those dimensions here with my tape measure. I'm showing that you'll need about 23 inches on the width between your A-frame at the furthest point forward, you know, just behind your propane tanks. And then going back, if you measure from that point, you'll need about 14.5 inches. That's the depth of the box. And then if you measure up from that same point, you'll need about 12 inches of height. You'll need to clear your front wall with 12 inches. And so those are the dimensions to, to check to see if this will fit on your, your travel trailer. And you know, I think mine is, is pretty average here. So I think this same box will probably fit the majority of travel trailers, but you know, definitely check your dimensions and uh, definitely comment below if you have a different make and model to let us know if it works on yours. Okay, so once I got the battery box trimmed to fit, I just picked up some stainless steel bolts with lock nuts and washers from my local hardware store. I recommend doing two and a half inch long bolts. I only did two inch, but I think the two and a half would be better, give you a little more length to get those nuts on. And basically I just made a sandwich to secure the battery box with those two by two spacers and then the existing L brackets there. But I mean, the end result is just a very secure battery box. Then circling back to how I trimmed the front corners off of the, the box, I did come back with some expanding foam just to fill the small cuts where I trimmed off those front corners in order for mine to fit. And then I just painted it black so it all blends. You know, you may not have to trim the corners of your box depending on your setup, but if you do, that expanding foam is gonna seal it up nicely and keep all the elements out. And speaking of elements, technically on this, uh, this marine grade battery box, I don't believe it's intended to be completely waterproof. You know, I've noticed that even the, the battery boxes that the RV dealerships put on, they aren't waterproof either. I've always had to drill some small holes on my previous ones on the bottom and the corners to make sure that any water from rain that may get in has a clear path to drain out. And so I did exactly the same on this NOCO battery box. I just put some small holes in the bottom perimeter so that if water gets in, it'll drain instead of collecting. And then as far as securing the battery inside the battery box, I took the existing shipping foam that Vatrair shipped the battery in, you know, the, the shipping box. I took that existing foam and I cut the perimeter off to kind of make a, a frame basically to, to lock the battery in because the, the inside of the battery box here, it happens to be about the same size as the shipping box that the battery came in. And so that, that foam will kind of help keep the battery, you know, centered in the box. And then just for extra security, I took a, a spare tie down strap, made two slits in the battery box. And then I put the strap around the entire battery all the way around the L brackets so that it's it's nice and snug. Again, just extra insurance to keep it from you know bouncing around while in transit. Last, I just reconnected the positive and negative leads to the battery. They have these really nice bolt terminals supplied and they even give you these small caps for the, the nuts. I am using my original cables here at plenty of length. And then there's options on the NOCO battery box to go with the cables you know in from the back or the sides. So a lot of flexibility there. And then previously I had taken some wire loom and gone around all my battery cables. It just gives it a real nice finished look and keeps everything protected. But all in all, I'm really pleased with the end result here. It's just very clean, very simple. 
and very much a, a DIY project. You know, everything's nice and secure. It's nice and protected from the elements. The lid that's provided by NOCO, it's got two screw down knobs to secure it. So it's super easy to remove and check on the battery. I did uh, silicone two small holes on top of the lid. And for those curious, I actually was on the road driving through a, a torrential rain a couple weeks back. It was just nonstop rain all day. And so I checked on the, the battery afterward and everything was nice and dry on the, the inside. So it held up really well. I mean, I think if you took a pressure washer to it, you could probably force some water in there, but with just regular rain, even driving through it, it seems to stay nice and dry in here. Okay, so those are the install details, but let me show you the Vatra app next because I think that's another important feature. I think if you're going to install a lithium battery in your travel trailer, chances are you're going to want to accurately monitor that battery life. And you know, on past rigs, I've installed an additional battery monitor with a, one of those shunts and a display and everything, but that's really just an extra step, you know, extra expense. I mean, if the battery itself can incorporate that functionality through Bluetooth, then I think that's a huge bonus and it just keeps everything simple. So here's what the app looks like. It's very simple. You just turn on the Bluetooth, it connects, and then you see the basic stats like state of charge, you know, how full it is current amp draw, all that good stuff. And like I said, I've been using it for several weeks now. It's worked flawlessly for me. There's been no connectivity issues. And I really like that it's all just built into the battery itself. I mean, there's no need to buy a separate battery monitor. And then one other feature I wanna point out is that the Vatrair battery has self-heating built into it. And I think that's particularly important here on a, a travel trailer, you know, where the battery is outside the RV, maybe you're doing some extended season camping, it dips down into freezing temps, and we wanna make sure that the battery is, is heated then to protect it against damage, but also so that you can charge it even when it's colder outside. So I like that this battery has the self-heating built into it, and I should get a chance to try that out here in a couple months as the winter rolls in. All right, now one last thing I wanna mention is if you're going to upgrade to a lithium battery, you wanna make sure that your RV's built-in converter charger is lithium compatible. And you know, my RV, it's pretty basic here. And so it has more of an all-in-one converter charger. And thankfully it is lithium ready. And it seems like most RV brands in 2024 and forward, they're using lithium compatible converter chargers. Mine here is from WFCO and it's actually an auto sensing model being that you don't have to change a, a switch or a setting. It just recognizes the battery as lithium and then it charges it appropriately. And the, the reason that that's important is a lead acid battery, the one that typically comes with the RV, that one has a, a lower floating voltage compared to lithium. And so if your converter charger isn't compatible with lithium batteries, essentially it's gonna stop charging a lithium battery before it's full. You know, maybe leaving you with a, oh, about 80% full battery. So definitely check your converter charger and make sure that it's compatible with lithium. Uh, Progressive Dynamics is the other popular brand that's used by RV manufacturers. And most of theirs are lithium compatible. You just have to flip a little dip switch on the converter charger to tell it that you have a lithium battery. Whereas if you have the WFCO version like mine, it's auto sensing. And I'll just mention real quickly that with that auto sensing technology in the, the WFCO model, it does take it some time for it to figure out that the battery is lithium. And so what I've noticed is when you first add that lithium battery, it's gonna charge it up to maybe about 70 to 80%, and then it's gonna go really, really slow and sometimes just stop altogether. But then it'll start back up and slowly get back up to 100% for a full charge.